So this video is going to be all about rationalizing the denominator of a fraction. Um, so all the examples that we go through, they're all going to involve um, fractions with a third of one form or another on the bottom of the fraction. So this might be standalone third, it might be one third added or subtracted from another, or it might be a combination of um, numbers and thirds. So just a quick point of notation. If I have this, square root of five, times by the square root of five, now, obviously, this equals five. Uh, quite a quite a basic fact, but quite an important fact nonetheless. Um, so let's take a look at uh, our first example. So if we have um, something that looks like this, three root five, I want to rationalise the denominator. So at the moment, you can see that that. Um, that denominator there is a third. It's not a rational number. In order to rationalize the denominator where your denominator is just a third by itself, all we're going to do is multiply top and bottom of the fraction by whatever the third is on the bottom. So in this case, we're going to multiply top and bottom by root five. Um, what does that give me? Well, it gives me three root five on the top. What does that give me on the bottom? It gives me root five root five. Okay, and then working through, how is this rationalized the denominator? Well, if you look on the bottom now, I have root five, root five, which is just the same as five. So I can rewrite that as three root five all over five. So that is my denominator rationalized. Um, so just another thing to, to bear in mind here, if now I have um, four over root two, so you should notice straight away that some of these numbers um, We've got, we've got factors of one another here, so you should be thinking straight away, oh, there's the, the chance that I might need to simplify the resulting fraction. Well, I'm going to do the same thing again. Remember, rationalizing the denominator, like in our previous example here, uh, you notice we were presented with a fraction where there was a third on the bottom. Our final answer does not have a third on the bottom, so that denominator is rationalized. So here, how do we rationalize this denominator? Well, I'm going to multiply top and bottom by root two. Okay, because that's just a third on the bottom here. What am I left with? Four root two on the top, on the bottom, root two, root two. Okay, and then actually working out the rational denominator there. Well, root two, root two is the same as two. Just look, notice what we've got here. We've got four, four root two all over two. I can cancel this, I have two there, this, two root two over one, or I'll find answer, two root two. <laughs> Second example we're going to look at is where we have a number and a third on the bottom. Okay, in this case, again, we need to multiply the bottom and the top of the fraction by um, something such that we get rid of the third on the bottom. Um, what do we do in this case? Well, I've got four plus root three on the bottom of my fraction here. All I'm going to do is multiply top and bottom by four minus root three. And you'll see why that is in just a second. So this is very similar to your completing the square method, no, not completing the square, the perfect square method of um, factorising. So take a look at what happens here. I'm multiplying top and bottom by 4 minus root 3. Okay, and then on the bottom, I've got 4 plus root 3. I'll just leave that in brackets. Multiply by 4 minus root 3. Okay, that was my first step. Um, now, just in terms of my simplification, well, on the top, I'm just going to expand these brackets out. So three times four gives me 12, minus three times by root three, minus three root three. And on the bottom, four fours gives me 16. Okay, now I'm multiplying my four by my minus root three, gives me minus four root three. Now, looking at the second term, just remember when you're expanding brackets, you need to multiply each of my two terms in the first bracket by each of my two terms in the second bracket. A uh, number of different ways you could do this, but I've started off by looking at this four, multiplied it by the two terms in the second bracket to give me these two terms here. Now I'm going to work on my second term in the first bracket. So plus root three multiplied by four gives me plus four root three. And then plus root three times by minus root three leaves me with minus root three root three. I suggest you write this out in full um, just so you're not trying to do too many steps at once. Um, okay, so top 
You see it stays the same. I can't simplify that any further at the moment, or at least there's no need for me to do so. Now bottom, look what happens here. Okay, so in terms of my numbers, that 16 stays at 16, but here, I've got minus four root three, plus four root three. Hey, those essentially cancel. And I'm left with minus three root three, sorry, root three root three is the same as three. Okay, so final answer. Ooh, final answer is going to be 12 minus three root three all over and then just working out this numerical part on the bottom 13. So here notice I've rationalized the denominator that is now no longer a third on the bottom of my fraction here. Um, how did I do that? Well here I had four plus root three so I multiplied by four minus root three. I might multiply top and bottom of the fraction by four minus root three. Similarly if I had four minus root three on the bottom of this fraction I'd multiply top and bottom by four plus root three. Why do I do that? Well it's because here, once I get down to this step here, your two terms in the middle will cancel. Um, so you'll be always be left with, in, for situations like this, a number term, um, a multiple of a third, um, the same multiple of the same third, but with a different sign. So these will always cancel, and then two thirds multiplied together, uh, or two of the same thirds multiplied together, which just gives me a number. So essentially I have a number, another number, and then you can work that out. And in this way, um, your the bottom of your fraction, the denominator of the fraction, will be a rational number rather than a third. Let's look, look at one more example now. Um, very similar, so we're going to look at um, this one here. So if I have 4 plus root 5 all over 6 minus root 3, okay, so again, similar situation in that on the bottom of my fraction, I have a number and a third. So here I have six minus root three. What am I going to multiply top and bottom by here to rationalize the denominator? I'm going to multiply top and bottom by six plus root three. So multiply by six plus root three. Hey, what does this look like? Well, I'm just going to leave top in brackets. Multiplied by six plus root three on the bottom, six minus root three times by six plus root three. And in terms of expanding these brackets, a little bit more complicated than our previous example because we have a number and a third on the top rather than just a number. But same principles apply, so expanding these brackets, four times six gives me 24, four times by plus root three gives me plus four root three. Now plus five times by six, plus six root five, um, and now plus five times by root three gives me, um, let's write it like this and then we'll simplify it later on, root five root three, but you know that's the same as root 15 using our laws. Um, and then on the bottom, six sixes gives me 36, uh, six times by plus root three gives me plus six root three. Now, this bit here, so minus root three times by six, minus six root three, and now minus root three times by plus root three gives me minus root three root three. Okay, simplifying, and remember now that this bottom of the fraction should become a rational um, expression, so no surge should be involved here. Um, just looking at the top, what can we simplify here? Well, not a great deal in all honesty, 24 plus four root three, you know you can't combine these two because they're being added together and they are different thirds. It's like adding four uh, x, six y, say, plus, so they stay separate. And now just looking at that last term, you have that. Um, now the bottom of the fraction, what can I do here? Well, you notice these cancel as expected. So I'm left with 36 minus root three, root three, so minus three. Final answer here, I'm going to write it up here, because I'm running out of room. Uh, final answer here, I've got, uh, so that's just, top stays the same, plus four root three, plus six root five, 
plus root 15 all over 33. Don't worry that the top looks a little bit messy here. Remember the objective of these questions is to rationalize the denominator. And here we've gone from this to this where the bottom of our fraction is indeed rationalized. There is no third left on the bottom of that fraction. So we've looked at two different types of examples so far. Um, one where there is just a third on the bottom of the fraction and a um, second example where you've got a third added or subtracted um, from a number or to a number. Um, third example we're going to look at is when we have two thirds either added or subtracted together. So um, let's take a look at this one first. So I have root 7 plus root 3 on the top. Now I have root 7 minus root 3 on the bottom. Okay, So you should have seen a pattern emerging now in that um, if I have a sign on the bottom of my fraction in order to rationalize the denominator, essentially I multiply top and bottom of the fraction by the same thing but change the sign. So in this case I've got root 7 minus root 3. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by root 7 plus root 3. Okay. Um, 7 plus root 3. Okay, so just writing this all out. A bit laborious. Okay, it's just leaving that first expression in brackets and then multiplying it by our second expression root 7 plus root 3. Remember we're multiplying top and bottom by that expression. Um, now expanding it out, what do I have on the top? Root 7, root 7, so these two. Now these two, root 7 times by plus root 3. So you could simplify these already but I'm not going to. Root 3 times by root 7. It's working like a second term now. Uh, root 3, root 3. Quite easy, all the signs there on the top are going to be positive. Now root 7, root 7 again. And remember we expect terms on the bottom to cancel. And it's going to be these middle terms here. So if we've got root 7, root 3. Now these two, minus root 3, root 7. And then minus root 3, root 3. Okay, and then just simplifying that, we have, I'm going to need to write this small, root 7 root 7, which is just 7, plus root 21, plus root 21, so that's your root 7 times by your root 3, and just remember your laws there, plus 3. Okay, root 3, root 3 gives me 3, and then on the bottom, 7. Okay, these cancel, so I've got plus root 7 root 3, minus root 3, root 7, so just remember that these are the same, so root 7, root 3 is the same as root 3, root 7, root 3 is the same as root 3, root 7, so these do cancel, um, and then minus root 3, root 3, we'll just call that 3 now, okay, simplifying that, now um, simplifying whatever else we can simplify there, I'm going to collect these two numbers terms together here, so I've got 10, now I've got root 21 plus root 21. How many lots of root 21 is that all together? Well, I've got two of them. And on the bottom, 7 minus 3 gives me 4. Um, so just a quick note here. You can actually cancel this. 10 plus um, 2 root 21 all over 4. You can cancel your 10 and your 4 and your 2 and your 4 here. So what happens is that, just remember, if I have something like this, I can split up this um, single fraction into two, two separate fractions. So I can split it up into 10 over 4 plus 2 root 21 over 4. And now here I can actually cancel. So that would be 5 over 2. And this would be... Oh, and this would be... Um, cancel my 2 and my 4 there. It would be root 21 over 2. Um, so, I mean, generally speaking, in your in your final answer, remember the, the objective of these questions are to rationalise the denominator. So if, you're, if you leave your final answer like this, 
Um, I would be extremely, I'd be extremely surprised if you were penalised in the final exam. Um, unless the question says fully simplify your answer, which is quite, I think it's quite unlikely that it will do so. Um, it would normally say rationalise the denominator. Um, you should be, it should be sufficient just to leave your answer like this. But if you are required to fully simplify your answer, just be aware that you can split this single fraction up into two smaller fractions like that. <laughs>